So today we went to Filey, one of our favourite places. We parked on top of the cliffs, um, but unfortunately when we got to the bottom, the, the tide was in. So we had to do a mad dash across the beach um, to reach Cobble Landing, which is always great fun. There's no harbour in Filey, so boats have to rely on tractors to, to pull them in and out of the sea. So here we all are, including little Isaac. Here's a few sights of Filey, the crazy golf, the lovely gardens, um, the huge hill you have to walk up to get into town um, and you get to the gardens at the top here with the bandstand. But you get a nice view of the brig out across the sea. And obviously you've got to have fish and chips. Uh, when we got out, um, the sun had actually started to come out, which was lovely. Um, and some finally started to look a little bit more sparkly and special. And we managed to get down on the beach because the tide was out enough. Which Isaac was very pleased about. So this is the photograph I'll be working from for this piece. So we had a lot of issues with this one and I almost just abandoned everything and, and tried to start again but I thought no let's stick with it you learn you learn from your mistakes So my first big issue was the paints um, which I'd bought for my birthday gouache paints uh, and I didn't think that gouache paints um, differed in quality but obviously they did or they did because these were more like watercolors than gouache as you can see as I'm applying the paint here, uh, they're very transparent um, and you, d you don't get that, that opacity that you do with gouache. But I thought I'll, I'll just carry on. The next issue I, I came across was when I came to edit it, I didn't realise uh, that the, all the the drawing and the underpainting was completely out of focus, which is why we've sort of dived straight into the next layer of painting. So that's another lesson learned. So this first layer proved very frustrating. And I was putting brush strokes down and they were just sort of vanishing into the paper as you can see here. It, it felt more like painting with an acrylic um, than a gouache. But then as I began to work along, I began to understand and how it worked, how, how the paint was reacting to the paper. Um, and then I actually quite enjoyed it. It's, it. I enjoy trying to work out how things work and how to apply it. Um, that's all part of painting, I guess, and it's something that keeps me on my toes. Um, but now when I probably go back to proper gouache, I'll probably struggle again, thinking that it reacts this way. So anyway, enough of all the moaning and let's get back down to the painting. Um, what I'm doing here on this layer is just creating loads of texture. As you can see, the beach is just full of pebbles um, and you can see that the, the water is a reflection of the sky above, so you've got to make sure that there's a lot of blue in there to reflect the sky. Um, and ju just create this surface, um, which may or may not show through on the next layer. I'm not sure, I'm just sort of working squinting my eyes and just looking at the shapes and just trying to replicate those. So as you can see in certain areas I, I go really dark only to lighten them all back up again um, 
and that, and that the pain being as it is it allows me to do this because I can um, use it kind of as a glaze um, so in this sense I'm quite enjoying it but good quality gouache would not enable you to do this We had such a lovely day this day um, and the sun coming out just added to the end of it um, but seeing Isaac on the beach um, and he had to pick up every single stone he saw and throw it in the sea uh, it was it was so lovely glad to be a part of that I really really wanted to paint the sea and I've, I wanted to paint it for quite a while as it's um, the sea I always find really relaxing um, and such a lovely place to be. I always like to be next to water um, and this seemed like a, an ample opportunity to be able to do that. I really enjoyed um, painting this foam coming in to the beach. Uh, quite tricky um, because obviously it's, it's a liquid and you've got to try and make it look transparent and, and enable the sand to show through from underneath. So yeah, I enjoyed that and I think I've achieved it. So there was thousands and thousands of shells and stones and pebbles all over the beach and no way was I going to replicate every single one. So I tried to achieve this by using like a dry brush effect over the surface and then just the odd dots here and there and just hopefully hope that the eye would be fooled into thinking that it was actually covered in stones. So the bottom right hand corner you can see where the sea's been pulling the sand in and out and you get like these dragging uh, dragging sensations which I've tried to use uh, again with the dry brush which really helps, it's quite a useful technique this, uh, which I think it really works as well uh, and use you know with quite quick motions gives that energy towards it. This is my first attempt at waves um, and it's, it's very much like anything else that you paint but, but within this you've got a lot of smooth and then deep texture so you have to build a lot of texture up and then in parts obviously that look fluid you have to leave uh, nice and soft so you've just got to really observe what you're looking at. There's a lot of clay in this sand, in fact all the cliffs around are, are very clayey and it's, it's really prone to erosion, I mean you can go year on year and you can see it receding, slowly but surely, um, but maybe if I want to get all the aqua colours of the beach I need to go somewhere more, a bit more tropical than the east coast of Yorkshire. So 
so this is a brand new day and, I, and I'd slept on it and I got to thinking maybe I need to change the sky colour slightly because it was looking rather I don't know cold and I wanted to warm it up a little bit more and maybe add some clouds and I had some really nice gouache some nice white gouache so I decided to incorporate this really good gouache with the not so good gouache um, and go over everything so the sky and obviously if I change the sky colour I'm gonna have to change the colour in the sea also because this is a, just a reflection from one to another And you'll see as I start using this um, different gouache how the opacity of the paint completely changes um, and the whole mood of the painting starts to change actually and it becomes more sort of um, posterish which is what I was trying to achieve initially although some of you might prefer as it, as it is already but I wanted to just carry on and sort of see if I could marry the two together really. We've been visiting this beach for over 30 years uh, and when we were both children, both me and my husband, with our own families. Um, so this is quite a special painting for me. Um, and it's instantly recognisable if you've ever been to Filey, with the brig in the distance. I think during the summer I'm going to take some photos on the brig itself when the tide is fully out because it's, it's quite a special place out there. It's uh, full of rock pools and you've got the sea either side and then when you get round to the other side you can actually see Scarborough in the distance so there's, there's a lot to see around there. I'm slowly coming to the end of this painting now and this is just pure white. Highlighting the crashing waves uh, and all the textures on top and I must say I have actually enjoyed it. I have learnt a lot from this um, Although it has been quite annoying in places. Yeah, I have learnt a lot um, But I, I must say I'm, I'm quite pleased it's finished too I hope you've enjoyed watching this little video um, please give me a like if you've enjoyed it and consider subscribing it would help me tremendously 
Thank you. Till next time.